Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you guys advanced color correcting using the Levels tool. This is going to be using GIMP version 2.10.8 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 photo editing masterclass from beginner to pro on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. All right, so here is the photo I'll be using for today's tutorial. I will have this available on Flickr. This is a photo I took myself. The main reason that I'm doing this tutorial is I want to provide a direct comparison between the color balance tool, which is a very easy and popular color balancing method found in GIMP, with the levels tool, which is just another color balancing method. The levels tool is usually used to balance out the brightness and contrast or the shadows and highlights of an image, but it can also be used for balancing the colors in your image. So before I dive into the direct comparison between these two tools. I'm going to start by cropping, resizing, and then balancing the shadows highlights of my image. So I'm going to come over here and grab my crop tool. And I'm going to come down here and make sure the fixed aspect ratio option is checked. And down here I just typed in 1080 colon 1920. And so I'm just going to center this crop into place here and I have my guide set to rule of thirds inside my crop so that's how I'm able to align my subject in the middle of my crop. So I'll just click inside that crop to apply it and now I want to resize my image so I'll go to image, scale image and I'm going to come over here and change the height to 2000 and hit the tab key and because I have this chain link icon linked here that's going to automatically change my width to match the aspect ratio that we just cropped out. If I wanted to scale this to 1920 by 1080, all I'd have to do is type in 1920, hit the tab key, and our width will go ahead and change to that. And actually, I will just keep these settings here. I'll change the X and Y resolution to 72 and click scale. Then I'll hold the control key and use my mouse wheel to zoom in. So now we have our photo nice and cropped and we have it resized, so it'll be a little bit easier to work with here in GIMP. Next, I'm going to come over to colors. Shadows highlights. I'll come over here to my shadow slider and just turn my shadows up a little bit. I can hold control and zoom in using my mouse wheel and this just allows me to sort of look at some of the more dark pixels in my image and make sure that I'm not creating too much noise here by turning up my shadows. When I edited this image originally I found that 40 was a pretty good setting for my shadows here. And I can also play with the highlights a little bit and see if there's anything that I want to turn up with the highlight settings. In this case, uh, the highlights of my image are going to be like the light coming in from the windows. And I didn't think that it really did anything to increase the highlights of this photo. So I'm just going to set those to zero. And then my white point adjustment is going to allow me to just brighten up my image overall by increasing the white point here. So that's just sort of increasing the total number of white pixels in my image. So I went with around four for this. I'm just going to increase the radius and that'll sort of spread that effect out a little bit and then decrease the compress, which also is going to spread the effect out. It's not going to constrict it too much. I have an entire tutorial dedicated to the Shadows Highlights tool, so I definitely recommend checking that out if you want to get a more uh, deep dive into this tool. So I can do a before and after and click OK. So hold Control and zoom out a little bit. All right, so I've applied the Shadows Highlights. Next, I'm just going to duplicate this image by coming over here to Image, duplicate and this is just going to allow me to compare our results using the two different color balancing methods. So the color balance tool is what I would consider a two-dimensional method for color balancing and I'm just going to open this up real quick by going to colors, color balance. So the reason I call this a two-dimensional color balancing tool is because you've got two different things you can edit here. You've got your range which is going to be your shadows, midtones, and highlights and then you've got your color levels which are your three different sliders here. So you're either adding red, green, or blue, or you're adding cyan, magenta, or yellow. So these are complementary color sets here. So for example, I'm on the midtones color range here, and if I add cyan, you'll see that all the midtones pixels in my image will now have cyan added to them, and vice versa. If I drag the slider to the right, that's going to add red to my midtones pixels in my image. And if you go down the line, it'll do the same thing for the different color sets here. So usually what you like to do with the color balance tool is just make subtle changes here. And this is something that you guys have seen a bunch of times if you watch my live photo editing sessions. 
So here I'm just adding one color or the other. So if I add more blue, it's going to take away yellow. If I add more yellow, it'll take away blue. So I'm just trying to find that good balance here between those colors in the midtones. And then I'll jump over to the shadows and I'm going to try to do this real quick because this tutorial is not about the color balance tool, it is about the levels tool. And then I'll jump over to my highlights here and same thing, I'm just going to adjust the colors, either add one or the other. So here's a before, here's an after. So the colors have improved. I did this kind of quickly so it might not look as good as it possibly could, but you guys get the general idea here of the color balance tool, so I'll click OK. So now let's switch over to our other image here, our duplicate image, and we're going to now use the levels tool to adjust the colors in our image. So I'm going to do that by coming over here to colors, levels. So where the color balance tool allows you to adjust the balance of colors on the three tonal ranges of your image, including the shadows, midtones, and highlights, the levels tool allows you to adjust the intensity of the colors on each color channel of your image, including red, green, and blue, setting the black, gray, and white points of your image for each color. Black, of course, represents less of a color, and white is going to represent more of a color. And all of that sounds super complicated, which is why I consider the levels tool a more advanced tool. But let's go ahead and break it down here directly on the levels tool to make it a little bit easier to understand. In addition to adjusting the intensity of colors on a particular color channel, you can also adjust the intensity of the shadows and highlights of the entire image overall. And that's done on the value channel, which is the default channel you start with on your levels tool. Here you have an area called input levels and you have a graph here called a histogram. So this histogram is showing you a representation of the brightness of the pixels in your image. And the left part of our histogram is going to represent the shadows and the right part is going to represent the highlights. The middle of our histogram is going to represent the midtones of the image. And trust me, this will be important once we get into the actual color balancing portion of this tutorial. So if I click on this arrow here, the black arrow, which represents our shadows and bring it inward, this is telling GIMP that everything from this point in our histogram to the left, so all of these pixels represented by this histogram are going to now represent black pixels. And basically what you're doing is increasing the total number of black pixels in the image and thus you're making your overall image darker. On the other hand, if you come over here to the white point, this white arrow here, and you bring that inward, you are saying that all of the pixels to the right of this imaginary line right here where this arrow is pointing are going to be white pixels. So we're thus increasing the total number of white pixels in our image. When you drag the white arrow to the left, you're going to brighten up the image overall. And then the gray arrow here, the gray arrow in the middle represents our midtones. So if you drag your midtones over to the left, your image is going to get brighter. And if you drag your midtones to the right, your image will get darker. And the reason for that is you are expanding the area in between the shadows and the midtones, and you're shrinking the area between the midtones and the highlights. So basically you're creating less highlight pixels here. And let me just come over here and hit the reset button. So if I were to actually adjust the shadows and highlights properly for the value channel of this image here, I would do something subtle like bring the highlights over here to uh, this point in the histogram where the highlights sort of drop off the image. And the shadows I might bring in a little bit here just to sort of darken it up a little bit and add back a little bit of contrast. And then I would play around with the midtones. And so I do want to bring out a little bit more of our subject. So I'll just shift the midtones a little bit to the left so that I'm just brightening up this image a little bit. So here's a before, here's an after. So how does all of this relate to color balancing using the levels tool? Well, right now we are in the value channel. So let me switch over to one of our color channels here. So let's go with red. Again, we have a histogram, but this time, instead of this representing dark and light pixels in our image, dark being on the left and light being on the right, now we have a representation of the intensity of red in our image. So right here we have a lot of red you could see in the darker portion of our image, meaning that the reds are pretty intense in the shadows of my image. Versus as we come over here to the highlights, there's barely any red. Uh, you could tell because the histogram kind of falls off right here. Adjusting the intensity of the color of the channel that we're on is going to be the same as adjusting the shadows or the highlights of the image. So I'll come over here to our histogram and I'm going to grab the black triangle here again, which represents the black point. This time, instead of all the pixels to the left of this arrow representing black pixels, 
They are now going to represent the opposite of red pixels, which if you'll remember in the color balance tool I brought up is cyan. So all of the pixels represented in this histogram to the left of the line created by this arrow are going to now be cyan pixels instead of red pixels. And as you can see, as a result, our image has become more cyan than it was previously. So let me just demonstrate that again. So I'll move this over. So you can see there's a lot more red. And when I shift this black point here of our red channel, now it becomes a lot more cyan and it's mainly in the darker pixels here of our image. So let me just shift that over a little bit because I think that effect is a bit too intense. On the other end of our histogram, we have our white point here. So if I move this over, we're gonna shift our white point, which means all of the pixels to the right of this line created by this triangle are now gonna be red. And so because these are all the highlights of our image, that means the highlights in here should now become more red, which you guys probably saw as I drag that over. So let me drag that back. You can see everything becomes a bit more cyan again. And if I drag that all the way over, now all of those highlight pixels become red. So that again is too much, so let me just calm that down a little bit, bring it back to about right there. And then for the gray point here, or the midtones, if I drag this to the left, again, we are shrinking the distance between our shadows and our midtones, so that is going to add more red. And if I bring this over to the right, we are shrinking the distance between the midtones and the highlights, which is shrinking the number of highlights and increasing the number of shadows in our red channel, which shadows in our red channel represent cyan. So now our image becomes more cyan. And let me just bring this again a little bit closer to the middle. So here's a before, here's an after. Below the main input levels histogram is something called output levels, and this just allows you to constrain the output range of the channel that you're editing. So in this case, because we're editing the red channel, if I come over here and grab this shadows slider here, this black triangle, and I increase this value, it's basically saying that any value pixel that is darker than this 12.27 is not going to be affected by the changes I'm making up here. So that means everything from right here on the histogram to the left is not being affected. That's why this image becomes a lot more red because there's a lot of dark pixels here that contain red and none of those dark pixels are being affected by the changes we're trying to make up here in the histogram. So I'm just gonna bring that back down to zero. So now all pixels are being affected again. If I come over here to our highlight slider, it's going to do the opposite. So when I bring that in, essentially we're saying that none of the highlight pixels from this point in the histogram on are being affected. So when we increase the amount of red here by shifting the white point of our histogram, it increased the number of red in the highlight pixels of our image. But when I'm constricting the output range here using this slider, I'm saying that none of the pixels that are brighter than this pixel right here are gonna be affected. So none of these changes right here took effect and that caused our entire image to become more cyan. So I use drastic examples to demonstrate here, but I'm going to just, of course, bring this down and create a more mild example. So let's say I don't want as much red in the highlights here. I can just bring this output levels slider a little bit to the left here, and you'll see that that'll tone down the red in our highlights. And then if I wanna increase the red in the shadows a tiny bit, I can just bring the black slider here, the shadow slider to the right a little bit, and you'll see that some of our darkest pixels in our image will start to turn back red. So here's a before and here's an after, and these changes, of course, include the changes we made to the value channel. So now let's move over to the green channel. And here we have another histogram, and this one is skewed to the left, which is telling me that, again, we don't have a lot of green in our highlights, and we have more green in our shadows here. So the higher that these bars in the histogram go, the more of that color is in that particular area of the image. So in this case, we're a little bit closer to the midtones. We're skewed a little bit towards the shadows, and we have a lot of green in that area. We have more green in our darkest shadows here, and then there's a little bit of a spike in green towards our highlights, but our absolute highlights here barely have any green, so there's not a lot of green in the highlights of our image. So if I come over here to the shadow slider and I increase this, this is going to add more of the opposite color of green, which is going to be magenta. So that's adding magenta to our shadows of our image. And then I can come over here to the highlights, and if I move this to the left, that is going to add a bit more green, so you can see our image becomes greener. And we wanna add a tiny bit of green, but we don't wanna to add too much because it could make our model look a little bit sickly here. And then, of course, we have our midtones. So if I shift this over to the right, it's going to add more magenta. And if I switch this over to the left, it's going to add more green to the midtones. So I'm just gonna add that slightly to the left. 
And I'm just going to actually decrease this down a little bit because I think we've added a little bit too much green. And then of course I can clamp the output here or I can constrict the output. And so if I drag the shadow slider up a little bit, you'll see that there's gonna be a bit more green added to the shadows of my image. So I'll just do that a tiny bit. And if I come over here and I drag my highlight slider, you can see that some of the green will disappear from our highlights. So here's a before, here is an after. And then finally, I can come over here to our blue channel. And again, we have a histogram. This one isn't as skewed. It's still skewed and we still have more blues towards the shadows and the midtones of our image with a little bit of a spike here near the darkest shadows of our image and then a little bit of a spike here towards the highlights. So the same concept applies here where I can click and drag my shadow slider. And now instead of adding blue, it's going to add the opposite, which is going to be yellow. So all the pixels to the left of this arrow here, the imaginary line created by this arrow are gonna be yellow. And then I can come over here and drag over my highlights slider. And that is going to turn all of the pixels to the right of this arrow right here, blue. So you should see that as I drag the slider in, it's gonna make our image more blue. And then of course we have the midtone slider. So if I shift this to the left, our image becomes more blue. If I shift it to the right, it becomes more yellow. In this case, I think I'm just going to add either a touch of yellow or actually just keep it where it was. And then I can constrict the output range here. So this is going to determine uh, how much of the pixels are actually affected by these changes. So if I bring this one in, you'll see that it's going to add a little bit more yellows back to my highlights. And if I bring the shadows to the right, it's going to add a little bit more blues back to the shadows. So there's a before and there's an after. So once I finish with that, I'll click OK and that'll apply my changes. And now if I come over here and compare this to the image that we use the color balance on, you won't see a major difference. I think the main difference is in the fact that we weren't able to adjust the value channel with the color balance tool. So we weren't able to adjust the shadows or the highlights of our image. Uh, so it's a slightly darker image, but you can see the colors are pretty good here with the color balance tool. I would say there's maybe not as much depth with the colors with this tool. So if I come back over here to the image where we used the levels tool, you'll see it's a little bit more balanced final result in terms of the overall color. Uh, but it did take a little bit more time and a little bit more technical knowledge to be able to produce this slightly better result. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're working on your projects and you're trying to determine which tool you should use to color balance your photos. The Levels tool is going to produce a slightly different result and give you probably a little bit more flexibility, whereas the Color Balance tool is a little bit more straightforward and a little bit easier to use, but maybe the result isn't quite as good as the Levels tool. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at YouTube youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. You can enroll in my best-selling GIMP photo editing masterclass from beginner to pro on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.